Here's just a quick lesson on completing the square. So this is just designed to be a refresher lesson reminding you of the method um, of completing the square. So completing the square is a method that helps you turn a quadrat that is given to you in standard form and changing it into vertex form. Now I've done a more in-depth lesson on this in the past so if you want a more detailed explanation of why I'm doing the steps that I'm doing um, look at one of the previous lessons I've posted on completing the square. This is just designed as a quick refresher on um, the steps to complete the square. The reason why we want to change a quadratic from standard form to vertex form is so that we can quickly pull out the vertex um, of the quadratic. The vertex of a quadratic that is given to you in vertex form is h, k. So if we have it in vertex form, we can pull out the vertex h, k, state whether it's a max or a min. If a is positive, it's a min. If a is negative, it's a max, because that if it's negative, it opens down. If it's positive, it opens up. Um, <clears throat> in the previous, I, I won't explain too much, but um, basically, to get from standard form to vertex form, the key thing we're going to need to do is create this right here. This is a binomial squared. To create that thing in brackets squared, that binomial squared, we will have to have this right here or this right here. These are both examples of perfect square trinomials. And there is a very, um, there's a step-by-step -step method to create this perfect square trinomial so that when we factor it, when we go from here to here, when we factor it, we get this binomial squared, which is the key component of vertex form. So I'll go through those steps with you um, through a few examples. I think we'll just do three examples, just quickly. So if you want, pause the video, read the steps. I'm not going to read through them now. Um, I'll reference them as I do the examples though. So first example. When completing the square, so we want to change this standard form equation, we want it to look like this. We want it to be in vertex form. We need it to have this binomial squared involved. So we need to create a perfect square trinomial. These are the steps we're going to do to create the perfect square trinomial so that when we factor it, we get this binomial squared so that we can easily pull out our vertex h, k. Step one, you put the first two terms in brackets and you leave your c value, our plus five, off at the end outside the brackets. Next is we need to then, so you notice it already starts to look like vertex form a little bit more, but we need to create a perfect square trinomial inside these brackets so that when we factor it, we get the binomial squared. Here's the trick for creating the perfect square trinomial. We're going to add zero in a fancy way. What we're going to do is inside the brackets, we are going to add and subtract half of that eight squared. So you take half of eight, square it, half of eight is four, four squared is 16. So what we're going to do is add and subtract 16 inside the brackets. I'll continue in red. So we keep our x squared plus eight x, and I'm going to add 16 and subtract 16 inside the brackets after it and keep that plus five off at the end. So I've added 16 minus 16, that's zero. So I've added zero in a fancy way. What I have inside the brackets here is a perfect square trinomial. And then this annoying minus 16. I need to take that minus 16 outside of the brackets by multiplying it by the value in front of the brackets, which in this case is just a one. So one times negative 16 is negative 16. So outside the brackets, it's going to look exactly the same as it did in the brackets. So I take that negative 16 outside the brackets, and my last step is going to be factoring this perfect square trinomial that I've created. And it's going to factor very nicely to a binomial squared if I've done things properly. I need to find two numbers. So when factoring a quadratic with an a value of 1, you find two numbers that have a product of your c value, a product of 16, and a sum of 8. The two numbers that multiply to 16 add to 8 are 4 and 4. And that should always happen when you factor a perfect square trinomial as you get the same number here and here. It's a number repeated that gives us our sum and product of what we're looking for. So when I put it into its factors, it would be, I'll erase this in a second, it would be y equals x plus 4 times x plus 4 with the negative 16 plus 5 off at the end. I'm not going to write it as x plus 4 times x plus 4. Anything times itself, I could write that as x plus 4 squared. And then negative 16 plus 5 is negative 11. So it's now in vertex form. My vertex actually asks us for axis of symmetry as well. I'll write that first. Axis of symmetry, that's the vertical line that passes through the vertex. It's always x 
equals whatever the h value is. In this case, h is negative 4. Our vertex is always h, k. And in this case, our h is negative 4. Our k is negative 11. So the vertex is at negative 4, negative 11. Is the vertex a max or a min point? Since our a value is positive 1, that means the parabola opens up, which means the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, so it is a minimum point. So I'll write min beside my vertex. We'll do two more examples. This one, there's going to be an a value other than 1 in front of the x squared, so there's a couple extra things we have to do for this one. Step 1 stays the same. You put the first two terms in brackets, and you leave your c value off at the end. Here's where another step comes in. Before we create our perfect squared trinomial, we need to factor out the number that's in front of the x squared. We don't take out an x, we just take the number that's in front of the x squared. So I take out a 2. Divide both the terms only, both the terms in the brackets. I'm only factoring out from the terms in the brackets. So divide both the terms in the brackets by the 2 I took out, and I get x squared minus 6x plus 11. Now I create my perfect squared trinomial in the brackets by adding and subtracting half of that 6 squared. That gives me 9. So I need to add and subtract 9 inside the brackets, and then I'll have my perfect square trinomial inside the brackets, which will factor nicely to a binomial squared. The only thing is I don't want that minus 9 in there. I had to put it there so that because what I did was I added 0 in a fancy way to keep the value of the function the same. But I want that negative 9 out of the bracket, so I need to multiply it by what is in front of the brackets. So I need to distribute this 2 to that negative 9 to get it out. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18, so outside the brackets, that negative 9 will change to a negative 18. So I have 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9, negative 18 plus 11. Last step, factor my perfect square trinomial that is in the brackets. So I would find two numbers who have a product of 9, sum of negative 6. The two numbers that do that are negative 3 and negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. So my factors are x minus 3 and x minus 3, which I could write as x minus 3 squared. Negative 18 plus 11 is negative 7. Let's write our vertex axis of symmetry and whether it's a max or a min. So first of all, my axis of symmetry is x equals 3. My vertex is going to be 3, negative 7. And since my a value is positive, it opens up. So the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola. So it is a min point. Let's move on to this one since it has a fraction. <clears throat> Last example that we'll do, we're going to convert this equation into vertex form using the method of completing the square. Step one stays the same. You put the first two terms in brackets, and you put your c value outside of the brackets off at the end. Next, we factor out whatever number is in front of the x squared. So we're going to take out that negative 2 over 3 and divide both of the terms in the brackets by the negative 2 over 3. So I'm going to have to divide this 8 by the negative 2 over 3 that I took out. So I'm going to have to do 8 divided by negative 2 over 3. That's the same thing as saying 8 times 3 over negative 2, which would give me 24 over negative 2, which equals negative 12. <clears throat> so when I divide 8 by the negative 2 over 3, I get, well, let me do it in red, I'd get minus 12x. Now I have to create my perfect square trinomial inside the brackets by adding and subtracting half of that 12 squared. Half of 12 is 6, 6 squared is 36, so I need to add and subtract 36 inside the brackets, keep that plus 5 at the end, but I want that negative 36 out of the bracket, so I have to multiply it by the negative 2 over 3, and that would give me 24. So 
negative 2 over 3, x squared minus 12x plus 36. I got the negative 36 out by multiplying it by negative 2 over 3. That gives me positive 24. And I have to keep that plus 5. Let me move this down a bit, give us some more room. Last step, I need to factor what's in the brackets. <clears throat> the numbers that multiply to 36 add to negative 12 or negative 6 and negative 6. So I get x minus 6 times x minus 6, which is x minus 6 squared. 24 plus 5 is 29. My axis of symmetry, x equals 6. That's the vertical line that passes through the vertex of the quadratic. My vertex is at 6, 29. Oops. 6, 29. And because the a value is negative, that means it opens down, which means the vertex is at the top of the parabola, which means it is a maximum point. So this vertex is a max point. Okay, and that's it for the review of completing the square. Um, make sure you watch next lesson as well. I'm going to show you another method for finding the vertex, which is called partial factoring.